Hello folks. In this session, we would be discussing a very, very exclusive type of plot known as the contour plot. A very different type of plot. Now, let us first understand what a contour plot is all about and when we use it. Now, you should use a contour plot when you want to see how a third variable changes as a function of other two variables or we can say or we can take an example how z changes as a function of two inputs x and y so mathematically we can say that there is a variable z which is the function of x and y two other variables so if i want to understand that how my third variable or how my uh, third uh, function will change with respect to other two functions we should use a contour plot so x and y are the independent variables all right because since we i am we are trying to understand that how z changes as a result of two inputs x and y so x and y would be independent and z would be dependent now to draw a contour plot uh, we need to restrict the independent variables x and y in the form of a rectangular grid or a regular grid now this regular grid is known as a mesh grid m-e-s-h-g-r-i-d that's the name we get so we need to use the numpy dot mesh grid function all right so numpy library would be used which will give us a rectangular grid out of an array of x and y values so we have a predefined array of x values we have a predefined array of y values and with the help of numpy dot mesh grid uh, we would get a rectangular grid all right so this is just an example which you can see in front of you it's a it's a three dimensional surface on a two dimensional plane the plane is two dimensional but the surface is three dimensional now there are two types of uh, counter plot functions one is the counter and the other is counter f the difference is that the first one will draw the counter lines and the other one will give us a filled counter all right, so depending what type of counter plot you want to go for, you can select the option. Now, uh, one variable would be represented on the horizontal axis. The second variable would be represented, uh, would be, you know, would be represented on the y-axis or the vertical axis. And the third variable, third variable z, which you want to understand how how z variates according to, you know, uh, the other two variables. This third variable z would be, would be represented by a color gradient, all right? Or we can call them as isolines. Isolines are the lines of constant value. Mathematically, we define them as the lines of constant value. So we have three variables here: two independent variables x and y, and we want to understand how z variates according to these two variables. So this third variable would be represented by a color gradient or the isolines. This type of plot is very very useful when it comes to data analysis especially uh, when you have a set of trivariate data out of this and, and, and in this trivariate data one variable or one data set is dependent and the rest of the two are independent so if this is the type of data then uh, you can go for this contour plot and typically if you are searching for minimum and maximum this minimum and the maximum values this plot is of great help the major condition all the three variables must be of numeric nature categorical data is not possible and the minimum and maximum of the gradient are the minimum and the maximum of the z values because it's a third variable which would be represented by the color gradient so the minimum and maximum of the gradient would by default would be the minimum and the maximum of the z values okay so this is what we need to draw a counter plot the code is on the right hand side so we need to import numpy we need to import the matplotlib then we define the uh, array of x list and the y list x and y functions basically so we are using the np.linespace function to do that i have described earlier also what how the np.linespace works then uh, we want to draw a mesh grid that's what we discussed that the uh, the data of the independent variables would be in the form of a rectangular grid so we use the np dot mesh grid function then z is a variable uh, or z is a is a variable which is the function of x and y so we have defined that z is 
the square root of this calculation x raised to power 2 plus y raised to power 2 all right so we have defined that how z depends upon x and y or how it is related to x and y defining the subplot region one by one grid then uh, we want to draw a counter plot so cp means counter plot is equal to or if you can simply say if you don't want to use cp equal to you can remove that you can simply say ax dot counter f counter f means it will give a filled counter okay and i want to draw a counter between x y which are my independent variables and the z which is a dependent then i can customize it by adding a color bar okay so if you want to add a color bar you can use the color bar to the plot also with the help of this function pick dot color bar okay and cp because i have used cp equal to and that is why so if you if you want to define a color bar then you can do that this way otherwise you can simply write this function setting the title setting the x label setting the y label and then finally we get the plt dot show so let's see how this comes so this is the function uh, we have defining the x and y values uh, then uh, we have this uh, uh, mesh grid and then we have the counter plot between x y and z we want to add color bar adding titles labels and then we go to plt dot show so let's see now this is the counter plot okay so this is the color bar which we have added so if you will remove this option you will not see this 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 will only tell you you know the range of values that you know according to the color so wherever you can find this type of color that means the value ranges are between 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 these two or this area and so on all right so this is if you want to if you want to draw unfilled counter plot then you can simply remove f okay and this will give you an unfilled counter plot so if you're using counter f it will give you a filled counter plot if you're using counter it will use, give you an un, unfilled counter plot the color bar doesn't make sense if you are going for a un, uh, unfilled counter uh, you know unfilled counter plots okay so color bars only make sense if you are going for a filled counter plot as we have done before so let me change it back again on ref and that's that's a counter plot all right very very beautiful type of plot you can you can visualize okay so that's for counter plots uh now let us uh, move to something which are known as annotations now annotations uh basically you know if there is a plot and then you want to mark at various locations you know you are showcasing certain plot in a presentation in your analysis or in your reports and you want to specifically mark certain point you want to write some text on the plot or you want to overlay some text on the plot how you can do that so there are two points that you have to consider in annotations one uh, the location you want to annotate all right which is represented by the xy argument so with the help of xy argument you can tell at what location in the plot you want to create the annotation and uh, the location of the text so with the uh, you know uh, at whatever point you want you want to produce the annotation what text what text value <coughs> you want to show there all right that is something you need to go for so that's the xy text argument that you need to mention so there are two arguments one is the xy argument and the other is the xy text argument so both these arguments have to be in the form of tuple xy tuples okay so this is a quote very simple quote uh, this is defining the grid area x values y values so i want to make a plot uh, a line plot probably x dot plot between x and y marker should be of this shape color red line style dashed defining the y labels now this is the function you need to see which is the annotation function how to produce annotations that is ax dot annotate that you need to go for now this is the text that you want to show local max this, these are the two words that you want to showcase on the plot or you want to overlay on the plot so the first argument xy argument you have to tell the location where you want to show the annotation where you want to show this text all right and then this is the location of the text so xy argument will is the point at which you want to show the text means uh, you know uh, this is the location you want to annotate and this is the location of the text okay 
so with the help of xy text argument you are uh, mentioning the location of the text and with the help of xy argument you are telling about the location you want to annotate okay then uh, you can further add arrow props means arrows uh, highlighting in that particular direction with a color also and then shrink is an additional parameter if you want to shrink the size of the arrow you don't want to overlarge it you can use this parameter as well this would be more clear uh, when i will do it here okay few things looks good when you actually implement them <coughs> sorry so uh defining x and y values designing the plot now this is the annotations i have to produce all right so let me plot the plot first now now see what we have done what has happened local max are the two words that i want to overlay on the plot so you can see these two words on the plot okay then xy defines the location you want to annotate where you want to mark so that is x2 y5 so x2 y5 now this is the location where you want to annotate all right with the location which you want want to show to the people to whom you are presenting and then xy text what is xy text xy text is the location of the text so i want to i want to overlay local max these two words on my plot but where all right so i want to place this text somewhere between x value of 4.5 and y value of 4 so this is x value of 4.5 and y value of 4 so this is where my text is placed all right so x5 will tell you the location you want to annotate this is the location i want to annotate x5 text will tell you where you want to place the text this is where i want to place the text and then i with the help of an arrow i can mark to this point so you can see i have produced an arrow here with a black face color okay simple function so this is how if, if you will not use the shrink parameter if suppose let's say you don't want to use the shrink parameter it is your choice you can remove but accordingly the they will find little difference in the shape of the arrow will not the difference might not be so much uh, visible because we shrinked it by 0 0.0 0 0.05 only okay so this is what you can do so that's how you can produce the annotations you can overlay text you can tell where you want uh, you know the location of the annotation then the location of the text that you want to overlay and so on and you can put up arrows as well the way i have just just shown you all right so this is the basic annotation there are different arguments that you can you can you can produce okay different different arguments depending upon the type of coordinate system you want so you can play with this as much as you want okay then uh, there are certain uh, different ways of annotations like for example you can produce box props as well that is another different type of annotation that you can do so i will discuss this annotation in the next sec uh, next session and till that time keep plotting it's very important to practice and you can definitely discuss your doubts on the forum i would be happy to answer till that time thank you so much